Hello everyone, it's been a while. This is going to be t a tutorial video all about swords. I would consider swords to be one of, if not the most complicated weapons in Duck Game. Um, everything in this video is going to be from the perspective of a keyboard player. So, uh, if you're having trouble doing some of the stuff in this video on analog stick, um, I would recommend learning it on uh, a D-pad so that the inputs are more precise and they make sense, but uh, whatever works for you. I'm going to cover everything from the most basic sword stuff to the more most advanced stuff. Uh, even if you think you know a lot about swords, uh, I'll probably say a few things along the way that you didn't know, so I would advise sticking around for most of the video. The most basic thing to know about a sword is that if you hit attack, it'll swing, and if you swing at a duck, it'll kill them. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, like most things in duck game, it's a one-shot kill. Uh, in addition, if you hold the attack button, it'll stay extended like this, and this also will kill ducks if you just walk into them. However, there is a catch. Uh, if you swing at someone who's wearing armor, they won't die. The sword will get blocked by the armor until it, the armor takes enough damage that it breaks. Uh, most people don't know about the armor breaking thing. Actually, whenever you swing at a piece of armor, it'll take damage. Um, and its health value regenerates whenever it's not taking damage. Um, and of course, once you break enough of their armor, you can kill them. S something worth noting is that uh, the thing I mentioned earlier, where if you hold a sword, it'll stay extended, it, that w doesn't work on armor. It does break the armor, but it uh, won't kill them. And usually you won't want to do that. Another very important mechanic to know about swords is that if you throw a sword, it will also kill ducks, just like that. Um, like before, if you throw out a sword at someone who has armor, it won't kill them. It also will never break their armor. Um, however, you can still kill them if you hit their feet. And usually you have to be really far away to do that, because in order to do that, the sword has to slide on the ground like that, you saw. Um, also, if their head is uncovered, you can also sometimes get them with a uh, sword throw. Sticking with the basic sword mechanics, uh, we're now going to cover pogoing. Uh, pogo looks like this. Basically, uh, you're just bouncing up and down with the sword. It's not that hard. All you have to do is jump. You don't flap. Uh, you jump, hold down, like this. And then, uh, while, while you're holding down, you'll hit attack. And then you do a pogo. You can maintain some of your horizontal momentum when you're pogoing. Um, this is also a great way to kill people, because it'll kill people even through armor. And uh, you can get over their sword. If they're holding their sword out like this, you can jump over it and uh, kill their head. We are now going to get into the bread and butter of sword mechanics, and that would be sword stabbing. Uh, a sword stab looks just like this. Uh, and you may be asking, uh, why would you ever use a sword stab? It looks exactly like the thing you do when you just hold down the button. Maybe it's a little bit longer, but there's actually a very big difference between just holding the button and doing a sword stab. I'll explain that in a second. When you just hold down the button and you try and attack somebody with armor on, it won't do anything. However, when you do a sword stab, your sword becomes a lightsaber. Uh, it's as simple as that. It'll kill anything it touches. Um, this applies even to normal ducks who aren't wearing armor. So how do you do a sword stab? Uh, it's quite simple. All you do is you hold down. That's the first part. Then you want to hold back into the direction that you're not facing. So I'm holding down and left. On keyboard, you just hold, uh, you hold A and S. And on controller, you just hold down and back. And then you hit attack. Uh, at this point, I can release down and back and hold, keep holding attack. And you have to keep holding attack for as long as you want to maintain the sword stab. Uh, it's really helpful when you're sword stabbing to hold strafe, because this way, um, when you get near a wall... Oh, let me show you this. When you get near a wall with a sword stab, and you run into the wall, it'll bonk the wall and your sword stab will be reset. This is, uh, it's really annoying because of how much space a sword stab takes up. It makes you, like, four times as wide. But it's worth it um, to hold strafe so you can butt up against walls and navigate through tight quarters. There's a lot of different kinds of sword stabs. You saw the most basic one there where you just hold down and then back and then attack and keep holding attack. But um, in reality, if you hold down and then you hit back, you'll notice that the sword swings in this arcing motion. And really, you can pick any angle in that motion. Uh, I mean, I don't think you can pick any angle, but there's quite a few that you can pick. Um, and these, they, they, it just does what it looks like. It's a slightly different angle. But some of them, um, perhaps like the 45 degree one, will be useful um, if you're trying to get around corners like this. Um, the most useful one, though, aside from the plain old straight stab, full stab, 
is what I'm calling the vertical stab. Uh, what you do is you hold down, and then on the same, on the same frame, the exact same frame, you're going to hit back and attack. Uh, I'll get it in a second here. There we go. So this, this what it looks like, I'm just holding the sword kind of normally, but actually it's a sword stab. So my sword is still a lightsaber, so if I walk into someone, they'll die. Uh, but the big advantage of this is that you can jump over corners like this and hit people's feet. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so this map we're on right now is Forest 10. This is probably the most common map that you'll see for uh, pure sword gameplay. It comes up quite a lot, and uh, there's nothing here but swords and armor and that magnet gun. Don't use that. But um, here I'm going to be showcasing the vertical stab. You can see uh, hit, you just hit down, back, and then on the same frame you hit attack. But this yellow duck above me, normally it would be kind of hard to kill them without risking getting uh, stabbed by going up. But if you just uh, if you jump and then flap, you see how my sword it intersects the block and it'll also hit their feet because it's a lightsaber. Um, and that'll that kills really easily anyone who's trying to camp you out on these ledges. Um, it's also something that you want to look out for if someone's standing here with a vertical stab, they're probably going to go for that. One last thing I want to mention with the vertical stab is something that I don't think a lot of people know about, and that's that you can actually buffer a vertical stab um, without doing the frame-perfect input, similar to how you do an angle safe, if you know how to do that. What I'm doing here is I'm just holding down, back, and attack, and then I'm hitting grab. And that'll always do a vertical so sword stab in both directions, too. Um, this is, if you're not, if you're not super consistent with the, the input, even I'm not super consistent with it 100% of the time, um, just the game sometimes will not do your inputs right. You can always get it if you hold, if you stand above a sword or near it, you hold down, back, and attack, and I'm holding all three of them at the same time, and then I hit grab. Uh, it's just a really easy way to set up a vertical stab. You can also do it in the air, if I like, uh, like that. If you're on keyboard, it's way easier. All you have to do, whoops, all you have to do on keyboard is you hold uh, A, S, and D, and uh, attack, and then hit grab, and it'll work in no matter what. Basically, you just uh, you just hold A, S, D, grab, and grab the sword, and it'll start a vertical stab. That's something I thought I would share. Now I'm going to cover sword climbing. Uh, sword climbing is something that I've covered in the past, so I won't spend super long on it, but it's definitely something that you should know. Um, it's a really useful sword mechanic, probably one of the coolest ones too. The first thing you have to know about sword climbing is that there's two separate, kind of separate methods to doing it. Uh, I'll go over the first method, uh, then I'm going to call method one, and then I'll go over the second one after that. The, the first method, you have to start it with a pogo. Or you can start with method 2, but we'll go over that later. But basically you pogo like this, and then you'll do stabs. So like, the same way you do a stab on the ground, you hold down, back, and then you hit attack like this. You do that after the pogo, you hold down and back, and then you'll start stabbing the wall. And like just like that, and it makes you go upwards. Uh, this only works after a pogo, like I mentioned. You can't just do it uh, from a standing position. Doesn't work. You have to pogo. Uh, and also, it will only work if you're going upwards. Like, you see, once I start falling downwards, I can stab the wall all I want and it won't push me upwards. So that's sword climbing uh, method one. Sword climbing two is also pretty simple. All you have to do is that we're going to set up for a horizontal pogo. It looks like this, where the sword is held horizontally before we pogo on the ground. But we'll do that in the wall. Um, so what you do is you flap. You, you keep holding jump uh, in the air to flap, and then you hold down, and you'll notice that the sword kind of goes like by my forehead, and then you hold attack, and you hold you, you keep holding all three of those, and you'll do a pogo. And if you do that next to the wall, and you keep holding down and jump, you'll, uh, you'll start sword climbing. You just keep pressing attack. You can let go of attack as soon as uh, you start sword climbing. But... This method has a lot of advantages over sword climbing method one. Uh, the biggest one being that you don't have to start it with a pogo. Um, also, it works while you're going down, so I guess that's two big advantages. So you can you can sword climb up, you can fall down, and you can start sword climbing again. And now I'm going to go over how to link the two methods. So the, uh, the reason that you want to link the two methods is because you might have noticed that sword climbing method two was a little bit slower than the first method. Like, I can climb really fast with this one. Uh... So, so in order to link them, it's basically, like I mentioned earlier, you have to do a pogo to start method 1, but this thing that we're doing in method 2 counts as a pogo. So to do method 2, I'm holding space and down, and to do method 1, what you hold down and back. So to transition, I'm going to stop holding jump, um, and then I'm going to start holding back. 
So right now I'm still holding down down and jump and then I'm gonna release jump and hold back. And then you keep and then you start stabbing really fast for method one. And then you can to do this, um, you can start it at any point point on the wall with method two, and then after you do one method two swords uh, sword climb, you can transition into the method one and you get to the top of the wall way faster. And that's all you need to know about sword climbing. A miscellaneous uh, feature of swords is that they can actually reflect quad laser bullets. Uh, all you have to do is swing. You can also hold uh, the sword and then jump into it, kind of like that. Uh, I think I don't know if you can stab them. No, you can't stab a sword, uh, a quad laser bullet, but you can you can swing at it and you can uh, hold swing and then jump into it. This doesn't really have that many useful purposes other than playing. Uh, you play pong with your your friends on that one space map. You know what I'm talking about. Just thought, there's something I thought I'd mention. Now I'm going to be going over some of the more advanced mechanics of swords. Uh, I'm going to be going over sword clipping. Basically, to do this, all you have to do is you start a sword climb in of uh, sword climb method one, and you have to have this situation here where you've got a wall and a corner. And as long as you keep hitting the attack button fast enough, you'll stay in the corner at the top there. You can hit it pretty fast too, um, but that's not necessary. But to do the clip, right now I'm holding down and back or A and S on keyboard and then to do the clip I just let go of S and that's all you have to do. Sometimes um, you'll let go of S and you still won't clip so what you have to do then is you just uh, you kind of vary your sword swing speed. If, you, if, if you're swinging really fast sometimes you can swing too fast and you won't clip like here I'm only holding back and I'm still not clipping. So what you have to do is you kind of you have to slow down your sword swing until you get into the wall. As long as you stay very close to the wall, and I mean very close, like touching it, it's pretty consistent. Um, if you're f further away from the wall, it doesn't happen quite as often. I'm getting really bad spawns here. There we go. Uh, but it's not that hard. Again, you just do method one, uh, and then you r let go of down. You can even start it with method two, like I mentioned earlier. You don't have to start with a pogo. Uh, that's it for sword clipping. Uh, these next two sword mechanics are both sword stabs, uh, and I'm putting them in this part of the video because I don't think that you should ever use them in a real game. Um, the first one is much easier than the second one, so we'll cover that one first. It's basically the same thing as what I was mentioning earlier with the uh, the vertical stab. All you have to do except is instead of doing it uh, on the ground here, you do it, you pogo into um, a drop down surface like a scaffold. It'll also work on the edge of blocks here, like you see how you can put your sword in the ground without bonking it or doing the pogo. And then you just do the, uh, you hit back and attack on the same frame, and you'll do this weird downward stab. Um, as far as I know, there's no real u reason to use this other than to look cool. It kind of looks like you're, I don't know, you're holding a knife upside down. But if you, the reason I'm standing on this scaffolding here is because if I walk into, onto blocks, it'll actually reset the stab because the sword will be in the ground. Um, sometimes you can you can kind of jump onto them and maintain it like that um, or fall through the platform but as soon as you start walking on blocks it'll get rid of it um, I suppose maybe you could kind of like stab someone's head below a platform but it really doesn't have enough range to do that so it's mostly just a cool little tech the last tech I'm gonna go over in this video is uh, what I call impossible stabbing uh, it's basically it's the hardest sword tech, but it's also one of the most useless ones. Uh, you'll remember the last one I went over was this, uh, this downward stab thing. Uh, this has pretty much no use. This next one definitely has no use. Um, maybe someone will find a use for it, but this uh, this tutorial that I'm going to do for it is only for keyboard players. Uh, if you're on a controller, um, you, pro you can probably still do it. I know for a fact that it's still possible, but the method that I use uh, I don't think will work as well. Um, so what you do is you have to pogo. You have to start with a pogo in order to do it. Um, and then from the pogo, uh, you're going to want to hit, uh, you're going to release down from the, normally when you pogo you hit down. You release down and hit S or forward. Um, and you'll notice that the sword does this weird angle thing. And this is what we're looking for here. Um, and then at the very end of that angle thing, right before, if I just keep holding forward, you'll notice it snaps, snaps back upwards. Um, right, right at the end, of that angle thing, you're going to want to hit uh, A and S, so you'll be holding D, A, and S. And then two frames after holding A and S, still holding D, you'll want to hit attack. Um, and it's really important that you do 
you do the you hold you hold A and S right as the right at the end of that uh, that downward part. I'll try and get one for you here. There you go. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can be pretty consistent at this. Sometimes I get a good run of like five or six of them in a row. Um, it's really all about getting the timing down. If you practice it, I'm sure you could get very consistent at it, but it does require at least two frame perfect inputs as far as I'm aware. Um, but this is this is what it looks like. I mean, you can't really use it for much. I mean, even on the platform here, it doesn't go very far. It does go quite a bit above you if you want to float like that, but it doesn't go as far out in front of you as a normal stab does. Uh, that's about it for the tech in this video. If you've made it all the way through the video, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully I'll be doing uh, more tech videos without another uh, six month break or whatever it was. Uh, see you around.